Hello children. Welcome back to my YouTube channel English Made Easy with Rachna Chakravarti. So children, today I'm going to share with you some easy tips to remember English grammar. And today in this module, I have selected some very interesting topics which is a little confusing too for the students. Though we have been doing from years together, but still we are confused. So how to remove this confusion? I will give you certain tips in this module. So please see the module till the end. And those who have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do quickly subscribe to my channel and put your comments in the comment section because always your comments motivates me to come up with my next video and what you want to listen more from me. Now this video is also an inspiration with whatever I got in boxes. So that is why I came up with this two very important topic, word formation and punctuation. So today I will be covering this two very important topic about word formation and punctuation. So children, are you ready to go with it? So at the very onset, sit down with your books and notebooks and start writing the important points or else you can pause and see. So let us start with word formation. Yes, the first one which I've selected is how to make your nouns. So here are certain rules to make nouns. We first need to add suffixes. My children, what are suffixes? Suffixes are additional words or alphabets which are used after the word like this. T-I-O-N, S-I-O-N, N-E-S-S, A-N-C-E, E-N-C-E, M-E-N-T, and Y-N-T. Then, secondly, you can also use the, the word the, the definite article the before the word which is asked to you. And if you use that, you will be able to identify whether the word which you have selected is the noun form of the word or not. Or else, the third option is that you can ask the question kya, that means what. For example, a sentence, painful, so what painful, kya painful, it should be like kya pain, something like that. And if you can ask the question with what, that means it is your noun form of that word. For example, beautiful, here you cannot ask beautiful, what beautiful. So this is wrong. So it becomes the beauty. When you use the before it, then we automatically get, we do not say the beautiful girl, something like that. So beautiful is not the noun form. But if I say the beauty, yes, of course, we always use the word the beauty. So it is ending with the word why. So I hope you have understood to some extent how to make nouns. So always stick to adding of suffixes, use the before the word, or you can ask the question with what or fourthly, just place it in the sentence and see what it is. So these are the main three ways in which you can convert a word given to you in the noun form. Convert a given word to adjective form. To make it adjective form, you need to use suffixes like TIV, ED, ABLE, LEWS, ENT, OUS, ANT, FUL. Now, this is the first by using suffixes. That means adding it after the word. Or else you can write down a noun after the word to check out whether. The word which you have made is correct or not. Take a correlative noun. Suppose the word given to you in the question is would. You can see in the example which I have given. If the word given to you is would, 
you just write and associate what with it wood pencil pencil is also made of wood table is also made of wood chair is also made of wood just write that word after it does it really make sense when i say wood chair when i say wood pencil no we need to say wooden chair so what is the adjective form wooden or else you can also ask the question kaisa how so then the chair how <coughs> then you can say wooden chair so these are the two main options of converting to adjective form then how do we convert a word to adverb and verb form of course in adverb it is little easy add ly to the adjective and ask the question how so you have to add ly that is not enough every time it is not ly there are many exception for example i have given you the exception good well fast fast hard hard late late so these words are not always these are verbs also so these are not always used as an adverb you need to read the sentence and according to the sentence whether it is used as an adverb or not so these are some of the exceptional rules now to make verb you need to check it whether you are correct or not by using the word to before it or else add the word to before the word or else make it be plus adjective so with your adjective you can just precede the adjective with be make plus adjective so that means your word the word plus the adjective for example the word is friend and you have to give the adjective form of the word friend how do you make it you need to add the word just now i told you children yes you need to add the word be before the adjective so it becomes be friend so be friend is what be friend is your verb so to make the verb children you need to add be before the adjective which i have given to you so use the word be before it or else you can use to before the word and check whether you are right or wrong then coming to the next punctuation so children what are punctuation punctuations are used to mark a sentence formation so when you are making a sentence formation you need punctuations to be known in detail so there are many punctuations approximately there are 14 main punctuations but we need to remember right now from exam point of view these are some of the punctuation which you really need to understand because it is asked as a compulsory question in your language study so you need to remember this a uh, few punctuation like full stop question mark exclamation mark comma quotation colon apostrophe dash and hyphen these are the main ones which you really need to remember a lot so let us start with the first one and that is your full stop so full stop what is full stop it is also known as a period that means one particular period is completed so a full stop comes or else it is also considered to be a longest pause it is used to denote the end of a sentence that means the sentence is completed then we use a full stop mostly it is used for two types of sentences that is your assertive sentence and your imperative sentence so these two type of sentences end with a full stop it is also used in some abbreviations for and also to write email addresses for example the words example itself we are using the dots then for the word ma which which you the abbreviations ma is an abbreviation master of arts we call it a master of arts 
So this for abbreviations also we are using full stop. Then to write the websites or the web addresses, the email address, we are using full stop www.abc.com. So here what we are doing, we are using full stop. So full stop is not only used at the end of a sentence, it is also used to demarcate the abbreviations, the email addresses, we use the full stop too. So you need to read a sentence, find out from a sentence, if it is an abbreviation, you need to rewrite it or by using a full stop. Then coming to the next punctuation mark, which is question mark. And children, I think this one everyone knows because question mark is normally used to ask a question and it is used mostly at the end of a sentence. For example, any question you can ask WH or with the helping verb, will you come with me? So here it ends in a question. Now moving ahead, we have another punctuation mark. Exclamation mark and comma. When do we use it? The exclamation mark is used at the end of a sentence to express surprise. It is also used after certain words which highlights striking thoughts. For example, bang, alas, crash. So after all this, you use the exclamation mark. Now coming to the next punctuation mark, which is very important, that is comma. Now comma is used in several ways. So here are some of the most important ways which I have discussed in this module. If you have any doubt, you can just ask me. It marks the shortest pause. A very, very shortest pause is your comma. It is used to separate series of words. If you are expressing in a sentence, lot of words, then you use comma. For example, we are saying the past of speech, nouns, pronouns, verb, adjectives. So after every word, you'll put a comma. Noun, comma, adjective, comma, verb, comma. So you'll be putting a comma there. So you're taking a pause there. Or else we use comma. In the second condition, we use comma before and after the participle phrase. Now children, what is a participle phrase? Participle phrase always starts with ing. And phrase is not one word, children. Phrase is collection of words. So when we start a participle phrase, then also we use comma. So before and after a participle phrase. For example, Mr. Sharma, being occupied couldn't come. So understood the sentence? Mr. Sharma, being is there, it is a participle phrase. So Mr. Sharma, comma, being occupied, comma, couldn't come, full stop. Then you have the next example which I have taken. We use comma after an absolute phrase. What is the meaning of an absolute phrase? Which is clearly understood that it is a phrase. For example, I have given you an example, children. Having done his work, comma, he went out to play. So here we are using comma also. To avoid repetition of a verb. Example, she received a watch. And he received a magazine or whatever, any other thing. So instead of telling and he received, I directly said and he a magazine. Did you see the change in the sentence? She received a watch and he a magazine. So I have evaporated certain words which should have been there. So for that I need comma in a sentence. So I hope you have understood what is comma. So for comma, you need to be very careful because there are several ways when we can use comma in a sentence. Yes, coming back to the next slide here, we have 
again when do we use our quotations so here are the different limitations when we use the quotation there are exactly two types of quotations the single inverted commas and the double inverted commas so when do we use it single is used for one word and double is used for phrase so whenever there is one word you want to identify then we use the single inverted comma and the double inverted comma is used for direct narrations for example she said i am your best friend children there is a particular way of putting this inverted commas so the here you can see it's like 6 and then 9 so 6 and 9 should be the way of uh, putting the inverted commas uh, that is also a particular way which you need to remember now when we use quote within quote it should be in single inverted comma what do i mean quote within quote already there is a narration which is going on and in inside that narration or inside the di direct speech you need to quote something then we will use single inverted comma for example he asked me can you pronounce the word strategic so the word strategic goes in single inverted comma so children did you understand when do we use double when do we use single so let us revise quickly double inverted comma is used for a phrase when there is more than one word single inverted commas are always used for one word one alphabets between the alphabets so that is how the main use of quotations in punctuation coming to the next one colon this is a very important topic for punctuation when do we use it it is used to enumerate a list so what do you, what do i mean when i'm saying enumerate that means to present or to show a list of some words then we use colons for example i have many things see the colon is coming here children i have many things bags pens boxes etc so many things after that we are using colon then secondly you can use like this there are three types of tenses see again the colon comes here you are going to enumerate the list of tenses nouns pronouns verbs etc secondly we use colons to mention the time and the ratio for example if i say it is 2:15 now so it is see the colon which is used in between then again for ratio 3 is to 2 we use colon so colon are used to mention the time and ratio and it is also used to enumerate a list so children need to read the sentence and if there it is enumerating a list of many things then use the colon there so please be careful when to use the colon let us move to the next one when do we use the most important apostrophe what is this apostrophe first of all <coughs> it is used to show a stop a pause when we are trying to show the possession contraction and some others also so apostrophe is used to show the possession contraction and others so what do i mean when i'm saying about possession see i've given you children here with the help of example it's about your possession somebody else's possession for example i say hari spends so the apostrophe there is used before the word s to show the possession of that pen which is of hari's my sister's pen again here the possessive case is used the sisters so the apostrophe is used there then again secondly we use it for contraction to show the contracted words also apostrophe is used for example i have instead of telling it as the full h a v e how do we pronounce it i have i have so instead of saying 
हाथ को लेवी से आया then again you are you are so there again there is we are not writing a and we are using the apostrophe there and how do we pronounce it you are you and are that is pronounced not you are we don't say it as you are a good girl we'll say you are okay so the last one where do we use the apostrophe for example for numerical forms we did about alphanumeric now it is about the numerical forms how many ones are there in 1122114411617 so when i am asking the question how many ones are there then to i am using the apostrophe so understood children when do we use apostrophe so read your question if any alphabet is missing it's not because they have made spelling error they want you to use the apostrophe there so children be careful instead of finding out the problems that they have forgotten look the board has made mistake they have forgotten the spellings no children you you need to use your apostrophe so let us move to the next slide now we have some more punctuations when do we use dash children dash is a small line which is used in between it is used to show the abrupt change of thought when there is a break up and there is a jump in of thought then we use dash or else it is also used to show time date but there should be space before and after so children why am highlighting this you will get to know because the next topic is hyphen so dash and hyphen they might look the same but the usage is different dash is used to show some abrupt change totally something changed and then here when you are using the dash before the dash you have to give space and after the dash you have to give space for example she was my friend we used to play together then the dash comes in the space children after together and before what sorry but but why am i telling you this let us read the sentence children once again she was my friend we used to play together but why am i telling you this so did you see the break up of the sentence abrupt change of thought till the first part it was she was my friend we used to play together the same uh, concept was going on but look at the next part but why am i telling you this so some total change example 1990 to 2000 again there is a dash in between so the dash after the 1990 there is space and before 2000 also there is space so let us come to the next one hyphen when do we use here we do not give the space so children that is why i was highlighting in the previous slide about why do we keep the space in dash we have to keep the space in hyphen we don't use the space here the words are related to each other they are related they correspond to each other for example sister in law here there is no space directly there is the hyphen which is used part time again the hyphen is used self made so finally i think you have understood all the important points which you need to remember for your punctuation and i hope this will help you in your scoring the marks for the exams so in this module we had learnt about two very important things that is your word formation and about the punctuation so children keep practicing and just keep writing you can consult your textbooks for more examples thank you